Point Blank Quarantine Edition. Hey, welcome to Point Blank for this second quarantine edition. My name is Kurt and uh, I'm alone today, so I'm going to make this uh, fairly quick. But I've got two, two films to discuss with you that are classic noir pieces that involve pandemics. So... Uh, this might be your thing. It might not be your thing. If uh, this kind of stuff makes you nervous, well, then I wouldn't watch these films. But um, if you're kind of like me and you kind of want to actually w learn uh, more about stuff and uh, watch some of the media that is, uh, you know, relates to this kind of thing, um, then that's why you might want to check out these these two films. And we have kind of similar and, and fairly relevant films to talk about today. The first one is The Killer That Stalked New York. And the second one is Panic in the Streets. And uh, they take place, obviously, in New York and in New Orleans, two places that are certainly hotbeds of the uh, coronavirus outbreak. These films both come from 1950, which is kind of interesting that these both came out in the same year. Uh, but our first film, The Killer That Stalked New York, yeah, it comes out in 1950. It's it's based on a, an article from the 1948 Cosmopolitan magazine, which talks about a smallpox epidemic that actually did take place in 1947 in New York City. This uh, led to one of the largest coordinated efforts to vaccine and inoculate people in uh, really of all time. The city of New York was able to inoculate five million people in the first two weeks. That's the kind of rapid response that they had to. Uh, this uh, this outbreak of smallpox, and luckily they had a vaccine available. But uh, so that's a historic context. But this is a you might call this a small time noir or or B rate noir. It has a noir style in the killer that stalked New York. It stars uh, Evelyn Keys, Charles Corbin, and William Bishop. Uh, and, and the premise here is the the woman Evelyn Keys or Sheila Bennett is is the character. Uh, she's returned from a trip from Cuba. She smuggled $50,000 worth of diamonds into the country. Well, in addition to the diamonds, uh, who she's smuggling in for her husband, Matt Crane, plays, played by Charles Corbin, she has also brought a case of smallpox to New York. So uh, during the course of this film, we have the search for the custom agents are sort of on the trail of, of uh, Sheila Bennett and her husband. And we also have uh, the doctor uh, who is on the trail of Sheila Bennett as well, even though at the, t at the beginning, he doesn't know uh, that she's the carrier of the smallpox vaccine. She goes to, uh, she has a fainting spell, goes to a community doctor, uh, infects a small child, and the, basically the disease spreads from her trying to evade the police and interacting with all sorts of people. The weird thing about this film, despite the camera work is very noir and it was uh, cinematography was done by Joseph Barak. And I think he, he did a very nice job. There's, there's a good, a lot of good stills, but the rest of the, the film is it's, it's not real. It's not the best. Um, it's interesting as a, a remnant of the noir era of filmmaking. It's kind of interesting because it is sort of half film and half public service announcement. Um, there's a lot of real life footage uh, from the event in here, there's a lot of like very clear public service announcement kind of statements from both the characters and the narrator of, of the film. It is interesting to see like how the how they portray the mayor taking quick and decisive action, um, the way that the medical team and the, the government interact to really try to put a stop to this smallpox ep epidemic. And you'll see that there's a lot of clear, decisive action uh, from the part of the leaders in this particular film. Like I said, it's it's really interesting, mostly as a historic artifact. The storytelling elements in here are pretty pretty simple. the The element of the smuggling is really only uh, a minor part of the of the whole plot. It's really about her, just kind of the character of um, Sheila Bennett, sort of wandering around town, infecting different people, and the search that both the custom agents are doing for her and the doctor for this uh, patient zero uh, who is who is spreading the smallpox around town. It does echo a lot of what's going on in New York City right now. 
Um, however, you know, obviously the very different case that they had something to uh, to treat people with. They had the vaccine uh, that they could they could do this massive. And I had no idea that this had happened in history. But imagine that organizing five million vaccinations in two weeks. That's that's just remarkable uh, coordination and some decisive leadership and decision making. So you you certainly have to. Uh, credit uh, the the actual leaders um, during this 1947 smallpox uh, epidemic that happened in New York City. So anyway, that's the killer that stalked New York. Decent film. You can find it for, well, you can find it for free online. It's, I think it's only an hour and a half long if you're looking for something to kill some time and you're interested in this sort of thing. This is sort of a recommendation for the, the very interested or the very curious. I wouldn't uh, strongly recommend this film. I did think that the better of these two films was the second film, uh, Panic in the Streets. And I have to recommend this one alone simply from the location shooting that was done uh, in the film. Most of it was shot uh, on location in New Orleans. So you get a nice uh, sense of what New Orleans looked like in, in 1950, both Bourbon Street, the warehouse district, some of the restaurants and bars. Uh, some of the housing units and that sort of thing. And for that, really that alone, it's it's worth a watch because I think you see some really interesting stuff uh, in the footage. But this is also both uh, a more interesting film. It has better better acting and a better plot uh, than uh, the killer that uh, walked uh, or stalked New York. In this one, we have a another uh, person who's who's come in illicitly into the country. Uh, and right at the beginning of, of this, we see him playing in a poker game. Uh, he's clearly sick. He he's, uh, has to excuse himself from the poker game, and the other poker players think that he has cheated them. So uh, a gang of, uh, of hoods uh, led by Blackie, who is played by a very young uh, Jack Palance, uh, are, track this guy down, and, and they kill him and throw him in the river. Now, and this is all in the opening scenes of the, of the the film, but uh, when he's fished out of the river, the coroner who is doing the autopsy notices some unusual things. So he calls in Lieutenant Commander Clinton Reed, and he plays basically our hero of this this somewhat noir tale. And he is an officer of the U.S. Public Health Service. Uh, he recognizes that there is an issue as well, and in this case, it's a, a possible case of pneumonic plague or the airborne version of Black Death, the bubonic plague. And he's he's definitely concerned about this. Um, it's a port town, so they believe it came in off of a ship with uh, rats that uh, might have been passing along uh, the plague in this case. So Clinton Reed, who is played by Richard uh, Widemark, uh, teams up with a police captain played by Paul Douglas. And this duo sort of goes around the city and they, they do track, you know, they knew that they know this guy was murdered. He was shot in the chest. So they're trying to find the murderers and also trying to stop this plague from spreading. They have a number of cases that show up uh, and they use those cases to try to backtrack to the original. Again, a patient zero uh, in this case. In our times today, we're, we're talking so much about, you know, the lack of, of resources and things for uh, especially healthcare workers fighting or, work, you know, doing their best to help people who've uh, got serious cases of COVID-19. But back here, we're looking at, at people fighting these smallpox and, uh, and bubonic plague efforts with uh, very little uh, to no uh, PPE or protective equipment. And, you know, I'm not sure, I'm assuming that part of that is actually historically correct. Part of that might be from the films just because then you wouldn't be able to see the actors' uh, faces. So what would be the the point of that. But in both of these, um, some of the things that, that come out that are, are very important and critical to these containing these ap- epidemics is the containment of people, uh, getting them quarantined, getting, you know, finding out how it is being transmitted and trying to stop uh, the spread uh, of these diseases. And obviously that's incredibly important today as well. But, you know, I, I just I, I found it interesting that here we are looking at uh, two films from 1950 two films talking about pandemics and so much of the advice uh, is relatively, you know, the same as the advice that we would give today. So that's, that's kind of interesting that both of these came out as sort of both film noirs, but also educating the public uh, in a certain 
sometimes subtle way, a little bit more subtle in the panic that uh, walked the streets than uh, the killer uh, that stalked New York. But uh, I really enjoyed of the two, the one that takes place in New Orleans, the panic in the street that just there were so many great scenes of like the character of Dr. Reed is much better. Uh, it's more interesting to see like he has one of the more believable family lives that I've seen in a noir film. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. And then we have this Jack Palance character who really, you know, p- plays the bad guy, the the you know Blackie who leads this this gang of hoods in in New Orleans and is the tough guy. And that part of it is pretty interesting as well. We see a lot of different scenes, as I said, from from New Orleans in the time. But I especially and listeners will know me uh, that I like the maritime stuff. But we get to we get to go on a ship. Uh, of this era because they're tracking down the uh, the disease and they do find the ship in which the guy came in and have to quarantine that ship. We see the uh, warehouse seaside warehouses where they're shipping coffee and bananas. And there's also an, another interesting uh, scene of the Siemens Hall, the U- Union Siemens Hall, where the uh, sailors who are looking for work are waiting for the call. And I, I thought that was interesting, too, because historically that was a pretty big deal for for mariners, but outside of a, a few, well, at this point, relatively small maritime unions, you don't really operate like that anymore. But, uh, overall, both of these were were really good films. I think they summed up a couple of points about pandemics um, that, you know, the containment is very important. Getting people isolated who have been exposed is extremely important. The time is of the time and decisive action is of the essence uh, the faster you act and the more decisively you react, the more you can contain a, a uh, pandemic. So the other thing that's re- relevant to our situation today is that you also see this interesting argument more in the Panic in the Streets uh, film, but in both films, sort of a state versus federal sort of uh, argument of, of allocation of resources and how to handle a situation. And I'll, you know, leave it to the the viewer to see how that plays out in both of these films. I would, you know, I would actually recommend both films. Uh, I thought they were both pretty good. Killer, that stock New York, like I said, is available for free online if you you just Google that. Uh, Panic in the Streets, I did rent. uh, I think it was just a couple of dollars to watch that one. And I do think that one was worth a couple of bucks. Like I said, I enjoyed the cinematography there. I really enjoyed the locations shooting. And of the two, it's uh, it was the stronger of the of the two films. Are these really both like hardcore noir films? No. But do they share elements of the hardcore genre or do they share elements of the noir genre? Certainly so, especially in the cinematography and sort of the core, you know, crime being a, a, a key element of um, of both narratives. So if uh, you're looking for some films to watch during this time of uh being in your own home, I would uh, strongly recommend both, both of these actually, and we'll see how things go, but maybe we'll be doing another quarantine edition of point blank, but otherwise everybody uh, stay healthy, uh, follow those uh, distancing uh, recommendations and wash your damn hands. See you next time.